Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Black Box Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjeev Verma, whole time director and CEO of Black Box Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Hello and good morning, everyone. I hope all are keeping safe and healthy. On behalf of Black Box Limited, I welcome everyone to our Q1 FY24 earnings call. On the call, I'm joined by Deepak Bansal, our Executive Director and Global CFO, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. We have updated our results presentation on the exchanges, and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. We are happy to meet again. Black Box is the leading global ICT solution provider, a pioneer in building the pathway of digital infrastructure for its customers with strong presence in 35 countries, served by 4,000 plus highly skilled resources. For more than four decades, we have emerged as a reliable, spawn strategic ally in IT solutions and services, accelerating business transformation and strengthening digital infrastructure foundations network, customer experience, connectivity, and more. We have our enterprises in consulting, designing, deploying, managing, and securing customers' IT and communications infrastructure. With the aid of this expertise, businesses can build and provide pertinent technological solutions and services that support their core business objectives. Our endeavors actively steer the evolution of digital infrastructure reaching across continents and embracing diverse culture, all underpinned by our astute global approach. Think global, act local. Our global strategy enables us to maintain relationships on a global scale. This approach ensures not only relevance, but also offers our customers the flexibility to achieve cost-effective deliveries across 35 countries from our center of excellence in India. This quarter, we continue to report a robust performance. For the quarter gone by, if you look at the deal wins above 1 million value, we have reported deal wins of 45 plus million dollars. Last year, same quarter, the deal wins was in excess of 35 million. So we have started the year on a positive note with strong performance across our business area. We have seen significant performance in in-building 5G solutions, connected building, on-demand and digital work solutions, data centers, and cybersecurity. Our cybersecurity business is gaining good traction, and we're increasing headcount in this vertical to grab opportunities that lie ahead. Our dedicated focus and investment in the data center space has been highly equipped. The data center market, particularly with the influence of hyperscale and cloud providers, is projected to experience substantial growth in the coming years. We stand ready and well prepared to embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. Presently, we proudly serve three out of the five major hyperscalers, cloud, social media enterprise as our esteemed clients, and we are thrilled to announce that we have recently advanced another customer in this space to a total annualized contract value of $100 million, making significant milestone for our company. This robust performance can be attributed to our robust order book, which is evident in our new order wins, and efficient execution capability. The consistent expansion of order book, even in the face of challenging economic environment, serves as a testament to the resilience of our business model. Last quarter, we announced that we signed a definitive agreement to acquire global speech networks in Australia. We have completed this transaction and further continue to look after good acquisition opportunities 
which in line with our stated strategy of looking out for businesses that offer growth potential by generating sales and revenue with suboptimal margin profile. The business must align logistically with our current operations, enabling us to onboard new customers, amplify existing business and they will facilitate expansion into unexplored geographic regions and build new capabilities. This acquisition and this acquired and scale methodology has worked out well for us, helping us to turn around the business quickly and bring short-term synergy. We are further optimistic on our growth plan and are well on track to receive our guidance for fiscal 24. That is it from my side. I now hand over the call to Deepak to run through the financial highlights. Thank you, Sanjeev, for the detailed overview. Good morning, everybody. And I will now discuss our financial performance for quarter one FY24. So revenues for quarter one FY24 witnessed a growth of 15% year on year of to INR 1571 crores from INR 1372 crores in quarter one FY23. And this growth in revenue is on account of strong order book reflected in new order wins each quarter and larger share of wallet from existing customers. Quarter on quarter revenue was impacted little bit due to a dip in TPS segment revenues. However, we are optimistic that this segment will recover and return to growth trajectory from quarter to FY24 onwards. EBITDA for the quarter increased by a remarkable 67% year on year to INR 89 crores from INR 54 crores in quarter 1 FY23. Please note the EBITDA for quarter 1 FY24 excludes the gain on cash flow hedges to the tune of INR 2 crores. Our dedicated focus on cost rationalization and improved productivity have started to yield positive results, increasing our EBITDA margins by 180 basis points year on year to 5.7% in quarter one FY24 from 3.9% in quarter one FY23. Profit after tax for the quarter grew by robust 56% year on year from INR 15 crores in quarter one FY23 to INR 24 crores in quarter one FY24. This substantial growth was partially offset by escalation in finance costs, primarily attributed to the upward trend in the interest rates. Earning per share, uh, uh, we reported an EPS of rupees 1, 1 rupees 43 pesa per share in quarter one FY24 versus 93 pesa per share in quarter one of FY23. With a substantial performance across our business parameters, coupled with good traction in cybersecurity, data centers, and all our business areas, we expect the margin enhancement trend to continue, boosting our confidence in achieving a stronger profitability in fiscal year 2024. That's all from my side. I will now request Sanjeev to join me for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participant present on the audio bridge who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Palak Shah from Billion Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. My uh, first question is on like last quarter, we mentioned that we have a large order backlog, backlog from North America. So how did the first quarter went by? Like how is the demand scenario panning out and uh, are we seeing any new geographies showing the same trend, demand trends like North America? Yeah, thanks, Palak. Uh, Sanjeev here. So our demand trends continues to be uh, strong, uh, considering that we are largely in the non-discretionary spend and with the hyper activity, specifically in the data center infrastructure 
we continue to see our pipelines uh, grow. So I think our expectation for order book uh, continues to be strong. We don't expect any uh, any significant uh, impact of uh, anything around our order book uh, in any geography. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, my next question is on uh, our capex. So, like, we to achieve revenue of uh, roughly about seven thousand crores. Uh, what is the capex that we need to do? Like, uh, what all areas are we looking at at for for the capex? I can. So, Pala, can you uh, Sanjeev? Uh, yeah, Sanjeev. Sanjeev, you go ahead. Yeah. So, we are not a capex centric uh, organization, Palak. I think uh, we are a capex light organization. We do not have any significant capex ex except for uh, providing uh, technology uh, infrastructure to our employees, be it laptop or desktops, and certain office infrastructure. We do not have any uh, capex specifically. I think Deepak can give you an idea of overall number, Deepak. Yeah, yeah. So our capex, like Sanjeev told, is that that mostly related to the servers or IT equipments and technology and whatever we are doing, like the integration of the technology and all those things from the software side. Uh, so our our capex normally we are expecting is in the range of let's say three to four million dollars in a year, uh, not exceeding that. Uh, okay, that's helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Ashay Jain from Jain Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, so uh, I have uh, three questions from my side. So firstly, uh, let me just congratulate uh, the team on advancing uh, the second customer to $100 million. I think it's a great achievement. So uh, congratulations once again. And uh, so my question is, uh, have we reached uh, to the peak level with both of these customers in terms of new order wins from them, or there is still some headroom for growth there? Uh, and just to follow up on this, that uh, do we even foresee more customers advancing at the same growth and uh, getting close to $100 million? So what are our plans to advance other customers at the same rate? Okay, so I'll answer the first uh, one. So the answer is no, we haven't reached a peak state uh, with respect to either of the two customers who join our $100 million club. One of the customers, a large uh, top, one of the top banks in the world, has been our customers for over uh, 15 years. And, uh, you know, and we continue to have a very long-term contract with the, with the bank. The other customer, a social media company, has uh, joined the club. And each of the these uh, Customers have a IT spend of billions of dollars. So we are currently working to see we gather more site. We currently are working to see we get more share of wallet. So there's a lot of headroom left with respect to what we can be achieving with this with, do, with these two customers over the next few years. It is a progress. You have to grow with the customer. You just cannot go uh, leap forward. And I think we have gained the trust. Um, the, with the new customer joining uh, the Hun Club in the last uh, 24 months, what took us about uh, 10 years with the you know, first customer, the second customer has of course taken us close to three to four years time, right? So the uh, the pace is faster. Uh, now coming to the second question with respect to what are we doing uh, with respect to uh, having more customers uh, join uh, increase our share of wallet, the Hun Dollar Club. So we have a focused group focusing on a specific set of customers that we believe have the possibility to serve both locally in America and globally, specifically in line with our core strength of data center infrastructure, building up uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, we have a strategic team focused on that. Uh, we already have a couple of customers that we are working closely uh, you know, with respect to uh, progress. A $100 million customer doesn't happen overnight, but I think we are confident that we should be able to add as we move forward over the next few quarters to bring more customers uh, doing fifty hundred million dollars. So yes, there's enough for room with the existing customers to grow, and also there is enough focus for us with the capital expenditure. I call it the digital infrastructure era over the next five seven years time. We are seeing some of that happening in India as well with investments coming uh, in the data center space, in the network refresh, in the airports that are getting built. Similarly, it's happening in other parts of the world, uh, most specifically in America, is very, very large. 
So we feel uh, enthused and uh, you know, excited about the opportunity to participate in building the digital highway on which the next generation applications will run. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's helpful. Second question. Uh, so, uh, just going through the presentation, uh, uh, we have highlighted that the cybersecurity business is uh, gaining good traction. So, uh, just uh, if you can elaborate on some significant developments in this specific vertical uh, during the quarter gone by, and how should we look at this segment uh, contributing to our uh, top line growth in the coming financial year, in the current financial year? So, just uh, balance quarters. Okay, so we uh, were uh, we invest, invested or focused, if you may, with cybersecurity build, build, uh, bringing in a specialized team and a specialized leadership. Uh, over the last 12 to 18 months time. We, we were focused on first building our capability. Cybersecurity is a capab capability-centric business in building our SOC operations in America, our SOC operations in Mumbai and Bangalore, and that has taken some time. At the same time, we have been working over the last few quarters, and I think as we speak, we have been now able to uh, rectify our cybersecurity business winning uh, deals from large uh, managing security for large airports. We have a couple of airports now. We have large uh, uh, manufacturing companies that we are supporting both locally and globally. It's largely a services-led. So I think uh, although our growth parameters overall is very, very large, instead cybersecurity came much later. So we are seeing significant traction. So we expect over the next, this fiscal year and the next fiscal year that the, our growth momentum in cybersecurity will be very, very high. We expect our revenues of cybersecurity in the in the region of five to ten percent over the next twelve twenty four months. Great. Uh, so, uh, lastly, on our uh, DPS business that uh, got impacted uh, during the quarter. Uh, so, uh, I believe uh, due to that, uh, we had some uh, degrowth uh, when we compare uh, our top line on a sequential basis. So, can you provide some inputs on what what exactly led to such performance and what is the plan now on making this business uh, to return its on its growth phase? Yeah, so we had a decline in the TPS business in the current quarter, largely in the Americas, with respect to our go-to-market strategy, and I think uh, that led us to uh, you know had some decline uh, with respect to our uh, purchases in that space. So we are reorganizing and refocusing back with our specific uh, IP-led products, uh, focusing on end customers and larger projects. That is in motion very, very quickly, and we expect that we will we should be able to recover reasonably well in uh, quarter two. Uh, at the fact of certain supply chain challenges, we were also behind in meeting some federal contract supplies that happens in a specific time, and we couldn't do that, and therefore the, we lost a couple of million there as well. Uh, which we expect to recover. So with our change in go-to-market strategy focusing on end customers, uh, with our uh, rebalancing our supply chain portfolio to address some of the large projects for the federal customers, we expect a large recovery in that in quarter two itself, and we expect that we should be able to catch up and not impact our over overall plan for TPS for the fiscal 24. Understood. That's, that's very helpful. Yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Suhas Nair from Kriza Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first question is on the uh, overall, uh, you know, you sound quite optimistic about the outlook for your business. So uh, what is, how are we investing in your front end to actually um, you know, tap this opportunity, a huge opportunity that is there in the marketplace? So could you just uh, explain about the strategy of go-to-market as well as uh, uh, expanding the reach by investing in the front end? No, so I think uh, we we have been investing continuously in the in the front end with respect to our sales go to motion, or be it respect to our architecting and solution engineering over the last couple of years time. 
And I think uh, it takes time to ramp up, right? But if, if, whether you put invest in the front with a sales motion or a solution or delivery capability. So that's one side of what we have done. But more importantly, I think we have the reasonable scale and the reasonable reduce case now as we start to grow. Uh, as you know, we grew last year itself uh, by about 15 odd percent. And I think when we get to scale, I think we're able to garner more share of wallet from our customers. Also, with what's happening around the overall IT ecosystem, I think uh, networking, data center, cyber is the bedrock on which uh, you know, many applications run that serve uh, both businesses and citizens. And I think uh, as we speak over the next few years' time, the network infrastructure, the consumption of information requiring from a data center uh, is, is seeing tremendous growth. Uh, we are seeing it in India, we're seeing it in America, as we all see. And I think the black box from that perspective is very well positioned. Uh, across continents and cultures, we present 35 countries to address our customers. We have a very, very uh, uh, good set of customers. So I think uh, with the customer's requirement to revamp network infrastructure, to digitize the company, and uh, you know, to be able to uh, prepare themselves for uh, the next decade, I think the black box is serving that very well. So I think uh, that allows us to address the customer needs in a very proactive manner now. Great. Uh, so, can, can, can we assume that this 15% kind of a growth rate is sustainable or do you see an acceleration in that also? No, I think in the, 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 what the visibility we have expect the 15% um, organic run for us to be confident to continue. Oh, so, actually, I am talking about the medium term perspective at least. Three, four years kind of. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. The second question is on the margin side. I said that uh, now, as you said, uh, are the efforts towards cost rationalization and cost optimization uh, are, are have it, has it reflected entirely in the mar in the margins at this point of time, or what is the use left out there in uh, from cost rationalization as well as optimization? So I think Deepak covered some of that in his uh, earlier uh, you know, statement. Having said that, I think uh, the answer is no. We have not gotten all of that used up in the current uh, uh, current uh, results. We expect more improvement to happen over the next few quarters as well. We expect, uh, no, uh, we had a lot of reorganizing using our capability in Bangalore that started to yield results. As we speak, there are more to happen. As we continue to add more revenues. We are creating more models to serve uh, globally through our excellence center. Now, those revenues will yield better margins because we are now more mature to support from our center of excellence in Bangalore. Of course, we are more mature to support locally as well. So, as we grow from here, our yield from our, uh, our yield of margin is expected to get better progressively quarter after quarter after quarter. So, now the answer is we have more just left. Uh, we would, would expect to go to seven, eight, nine, ten percent uh, no operating margin progressively, and that is the goal. There's enough to be done here. Uh, so the double-digit margins are possible over a medium term? The answer is yes. Great. And lastly, on the debt reduction, uh, as the rate cost has gone up because interest rates are moving up, is there any plan to uh, reduce the debt as we are also generating cash now? Deepak. Yeah. So the interest rates are not in our control because they are yeah. they are the Fed control type of thing. So uh, our our all the debt is linked with software, and the software has gone up to around 5.3 percent now. So software plus margin. That's how the interest rate went up. Now the plan for reduction of uh, uh, debt. Yes. By this year end, uh, while we are generating the cash flow, uh, the idea is that that the the most of the cash flow what we are generating is going into the growth of the revenues, 
because like you know that we have our most of the revenues is services led revenues and in the services led revenues uh, the working capital requirement is there upfront so whatever cash we are generating is going to fund that working capital so but still but still by year end we are expecting some level of debt will go down but i am not expecting like a very huge uh, decrease in the debt by by the year end uh, activity but yes in fy 25 our our debt will go down for sure uh, because because by that time we will have the substantial cash to have the working capital as well as the work as well as the debt going down. Thank thank you, Deepak. And the last question, if I can squeeze in, it's regarding the inorganic strategy because that is also one of the important pillars of our growth strategy. So, uh, are you seeing any opportunities uh, in the inorganic space? And if yes, uh, uh, what size we are talking here? So we have, I think we have stated that and uh, consistently that we remain opportunistic with respect to our inorganic strategy. So we remain interested in the inorganic strategy. Having said that, I've also stated in the earlier part that uh, we are not uh, emotional about economics. So we wouldn't just want to add acquisition because we want to add revenue. We want to see whether we can add value, whether we are, we are, whether it can be accredited to us and we are value buyers so that we can see uh, we can uh, return uh, to our shareholders in terms of bringing our value. So that's our thesis. Our thesis also is that we want to see whether it can give us an expansion of geography or a depth in a certain uh, solutions that we provide to our customers. But to that extent, uh, we remain focused to see what opportunities we get and what value to do that, and we'll continue to do that in each market we operate. And having said that, our sweet spot in general, of course, we have done some duckings, uh, as range of fifty hundred million dollars is kind of our sweet spot to see that we are able to acquire. So, is there anything on the active concentration at this point of time? So, uh, so we, no. we continue to we continue to look at it, and uh, you know the uh, the M and A is activity where we can't say active. We are active in the market, but you know we continue to look at that it whether it fits in our philosophy in terms of the value where we can add value so right now whatever the discussions are they are into let's say the preliminary stages or whatever it is not like something which is in very very advanced stage there is nothing in that okay thank you very much and all the best to the team thank you yeah thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of Jeevan Patwa from Sarsarar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so I have uh, one question on the uh, financials. Uh, in the financial, in the PNL, we have seen uh, shown the difference between uh, in the depreciation and the finance cost for end S and uh, the book value. So just want to understand that. So, yeah. uh, so why so, why is it different? So yeah, yeah. So, Jeevan, uh, from the PNL perspective, you know that in India we have the AS116. So, under the AS116 accounting, uh, our depreciation is so. Let's say real business depreciation. What we track as our business performance is let's say 11 crores for the quarter, and that's how the finance cost is like 28 crores for the quarter. But because because of the AS116 accounting, uh, we have to do uh, our our depreciation goes up to 28 crores. And our finance cost also goes up to like 33 crores, which is like a difference of so between interest and depreciation, uh, this the, both the levels goes up by around let's say 19 to 20 crores every quarter uh, because of that. But internally, for our performance perspective, we track like depreciation, business depreciation, and also the finance cost, which is as per the business. The India's one month is accounting depends on the fair value of the of the of the long term let's say leases and all those things what we have. Uh, so this is that we do that accounting. We disclose both the numbers, but from the PNL perspective, if you run the PNL uh, from the EBITDA, you have to reduce the depreciation as per India 116 and the finance cost as per India 116 to arrive at the PBT. Perfect. And so in the future, at some point, this will reverse, right? So in the future, sometime at some point, we will have a. Uh, it will. It will reverse. Then, it will reverse. It will be lower have, than our book. No, it will not. It will not. It will. It will be lower only if we are winding up the business. 
because Man. because what will happen is what will happen is that you will continue to renew your leases you will continue to renew so right now let's say if i have a 5 year lease and that 5 year lease uh, i will i will again renew it for 5 years so uh, so unless otherwise i am winding up the business then only then only it will it will come down otherwise it will not come down it will go almost at the same levels 1 crore here and there so because of the timing of the lease or because of the value of the lease it can but otherwise as per the accounting thing it can't go down much perfect perfect thanks a lot yeah that yeah thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question to ask a question you may press star and 1 our next question is from the line of yash mehta from ap capital please go ahead uh, good morning sir thank you for the opportunity i would like like to ask a couple of questions earlier what we have seen is many it companies were laying off employees how is the situation now if you can throw some light here no i think we are we, we, we are on a on a on hiring mode uh, we are in a mode of mode of growth we do have a rebalancing of our employees with respect to uh, reorganizing our center of excellence in bangalore so of course we are hiring more we expect to hire more in our center in bangalore and mumbai uh, to support our customers that will margin equity for us so overall our net employee count is going up and continue to go up Okay my next question would be data centers continue to be on the top of your de- deal wins this quarter assuming this win is from our recent customer which was advanced to 100 million also given in your disclosure cyber security is gaining a good traction we can we assume that we ha- we can see the same performance that is uh, good deals in cyber security in the way we are seeing in data centers Yeah, so I think yes, so I think uh, data center remains at the top of our pack because it's a it's a hyper growth area. To be correct, I think uh, it's not an Asian uh, customer; it's a global customer, largely in North America. And we expect that uh, hyper activity, hyper growth in data center from the large data center operators, including the hyperscalers and cloud providers and enterprise customers, to continue uh, in the midterm. So with, with three to five years times, so therefore we expect. we have been bullish on our growth plans for the data center so we expect the growth momentum for cyber security as i said earlier to catch momentum we we need to reach reach a certain scale we are getting there to you know and but we expect that momentum to grow with larger deals we have the ability to serve both locally and globally so it's margin equity for us and it's very critical part of any infrastructure the answer is yes we expect the cyber security growth momentum to start to increase pace as we move forward from here okay uh, thank you that's uh, that's all from my side thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of akash mehta from capas investments please go ahead hi sir and thanks for the opportunity uh, i just had one question uh, building from last quarter uh, so we acquired a company in australia where our intent was to ideally expand the, in that geography and to grab any cross sell opportunity that there may be so i know it's a little too early to comment on it but if you can just provide some color on the developments uh, there have we had any cross sell opportunities as such I guess I think uh, it's too early I think the the acquisition happened uh, last quarter uh, in the middle of the quarter so we not even have the first quarter have you said that as i said earlier uh, we have assessed the opportunity uh, it's in our largely in our cx cloud space uh, we have a similar business so there are some overlaps out there so we expect uh, a margin improvement uh, we expect to cross sell to each other's customer i think our combined revenue in the market uh, has uh, reasonably gone up in ag So the effect of that will be seen over the next few quarters. It's too early; it's not even the first full quarter that uh, we have applied. Okay, no worries. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from the line of Suhas Nayak from Kriza Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, uh, regarding your operating margins, and we say we need to. we are like we are planning to move from 6% around 6% to say 9 to 10% uh, 
what would be the contributors to that uh, what are the key contributors is it that the incremental business that we are getting are are at a higher margin uh, so can you just uh, probably spend some time on this yeah, so there are three four factors now one one of course uh, growth itself is a factor with respect to grow leverage uh, okay. in in mid double digits so when we grow we expect uh, certain of our fixed costs to uh, get amortized in a better manner uh, fixed costs are not linear in nature so therefore it wouldn't grow so that's one the the second of course we're expecting our global delivery model to mature better as we move forward and that comes at a slightly uh, lower cost for us so therefore better margin as we scale up from here we expect uh, some efficiency with respect to our procurement strategy as well uh, which will allow us to uh, you know get some traction on that and as we build scale from there we are we are still uh, in the process of uh, working through implementing and uh, focusing on our service now and erp systems allowing us to serve our back office in a more robust manner from offshore so a mix of growth a mix of uh, ability to deliver from a global delivery model uh, our ability to procure better on scale and uh, our more uh, uh, you know productivity or more uh, offshoring initiative that we have left to do over the next couple of quarters a combination of this four um, uh, gives us a good chance to uh, start to move the six uh, more towards uh, you know nine and a double digit figure progressively progressively over the next uh, uh, several quarters okay uh, oh okay thanks thank you thank you our next question is from the line of saurabh sandwani from sarsalar capital please go ahead um hi i just uh, wanted to understand uh, how frequently are uh, do the systems and uh, infrastructure that we set up needs an upgrade uh, how frequently does the client come back for an upgrade okay so i think if you look at the the network infrastructure is a refresh between 3 and 5 years time uh, some of them are on 3 years time some of them are 5 years time it also it also depends on the economic situation and the financial situation of the customer and where they put the money but in general a refresh for infrastructure be it network server storage wireless wire infrastructure is between 3 and 5 years time some investments with respect to cyber security are more frequent because uh, there is a massive change in threats going forward so that doesn't follow the cycle it can be as as quick as a year or two years depending upon what uh, customer want to do but in general our cyclical refresh of our businesses are uh, from a new deployment perspective would happen between 3 and 5 years time uh, so therefore if you have a bunch of 500 customers uh, you're always in a mode of trying to uh, you know uh, discover that design that deploy that manage that and then refresh that right and then again do discovery design because design can change customers are growing they're expanding they're rearchitecting so it's a continuous process but a reasonable cycle is between 3 and 5 years okay and and uh, so so right now given that 5g has come in we we are in the new refresh cycle right no so it is a different for every customer right some of them are in third year cycle some fourth some fifth year cycle so continuously we are assessing some are in expansion mode if you look at some of our manufacturing customers they are putting up semiconductor plants massive those are greenfield projects uh, so those are new right and those and then of course we have customers like banks who possibly did a refresh three years back that's coming up now so it's a continuous process of mapping an account correct so there's no uh, so every customer is in a different cycle of orbit based on when their capital expenditure happened in the past what their growth strategies are what new systems they want to bring and uh, you know so the green field that we will do now is 3 to 5 years time but the hundreds of customers have had their third year now fourth year coming or the fifth year they try to you know, refresh that and of course we also provide uh, managed services maintenance contracts after we do a project so when we do discover design uh, deploy then we manage and support and then over a period of time 3 years 4 years 5 years we again do discovery again design again deploy okay okay and um, one question regarding the automotive sector so now with the uh, connected cars and evs 
So, have there been any initiatives from the automotive companies to set up some uh, infrastructure for, you know, collecting the data from their new vehicles or anything? Okay. So, uh, many of the uh, – that's a good question. So, many of the uh, automotive companies, of course, uh, are working towards, uh, you know, connected cars, as you say, but, but they are – and the connected cars data, they are not a data company. They are a car-making company. So they possibly port the data to cloud companies, right? So they can possibly go to Amazon or go to whatever it is. A very few of them possibly will build their own data center. Tesla could be one of them, but many others would use the cloud that is getting built. And if you look at what we are doing, on the other side, we are helping build that cloud data center for some of those large hyperscalers that will provide the data management cap capability to the car companies. So the, so the car companies would keep the data with the cloud companies. So therefore, we are building data center for the cloud companies. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Yash Parekh from Mera Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I just have a couple of questions. First is, earlier we had seen the impact of severance cost, which uh, weighed heavy on our profitability. So what was the cost this quarter? Like we have seen the entire impact of uh, severance cost or there is some more impact that we can expect in this current financial year. Deepak, you want to take that? Uh, sorry, can you... Can you please repeat your last part of the question again? It was not audible to me fully. Uh, we have seen the impact of uh, severance cost, or uh, have we seen this impact, or is there some more impact that we can expect in this financial year of severance cost? Yeah, yeah. so severance cost, uh, uh, I think the major majority of the severance cost was done in the March quarter. Uh, but yes, we will continue to see some part of the severance cost still because we continue to uh, we continue to see that uh, that lot of people uh, what we have identified they are all we are we are we are let's say uh, re reducing them in in parts and pieces depend so that the business should not be impacted. So as and when they are going, if they there is anything which we have not accrued on their cost and there is some cost let's say which goes up and down that cost will continue to come but we are not expecting in the range of what we have expected in what we have done the numbers in the month in the in the march quarter but yes some of the cost in the range of between let's say 2 to 4 crores every quarter will still continue because we continue to look at optimizing the resources and hiring the more resources in 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 india uh, to deliver the work. Oh, fair enough. One more question. Uh, globally, companies are witnessing pressure due to inflationary trends. Like, how do you look at this macro environment? Also, given such inflationary trend continue to persist, do we still remain confident to achieve our guidance for this fiscal year? I'll take that. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, so, so the fact of the matter remains that there is a in, inflationary trend. There is also pressure on non interest cost. So we um, we have continuously have a cyclical method of repricing to our customers. Uh, more specifically, for all new bids, of course, we take uh, uh, every quarter repricing mechanics to adjust our um, sale price or, or relook at our cost. And also, as and when we get a chance to renew our customers, uh, we definitely uh, reprice it. So we are working to see that we are in place and neutral from that perspective uh, in our all ongoing projects and sale process and also on all opportunities to renew our customers uh, going forward. Okay. Fair enough, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Back check from my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjeev Verma for closing comments. Thanks. With this, I would like to thank everyone for joining on the call. I hope you have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with me, Deepak, our strategy growth advisor, our investor lesson advisor. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Black Box Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.